that means that I can step through all the other edits and compare them to that. And that other point stays where it is. It also has a few little preset buttons which is like swap. We'll just swap them left and right. So now it's just put my in point image on the right hand side and you can swap it back again. You can also do a quick vertical split, quick horizontal split. There's like quick ways of doing it without having to grab the little handles and move them around. So as you're working through a project, you just step down the timeline, you double click it up into the browser. Sorry, I wish I had a bit, bit more screen real estate here. And now you can compare those scenes and make sure that the colours are kind of working across all those edits so that things flow naturally. Because that's really the, the fundamental job. What you're trying to do is iron out all the variation between shots. You'll get lighting changes. You'll get camera setup changes where people don't white balance the camera properly or they've, you've only got to change 90 degrees with a camera and the way the light falls will change the look of it. Shadows will be darker. Everything can be seriously dodgy within a few seconds of changing a camera position. Um, so you're really trying to iron all that out. You're trying to create a look that an audience just kind of accept and it just kind of goes in and you're trying to make that the colour of the show enhance the story or enhance what you're trying to do with it. If it's something that's very promotional you might want to crank the colours up, give it a look, burn out all the highlights. There's a lot of stuff you can do like that. If you're trying to do something that's a little bit more moody like a drama piece your colour corrections could be a lot more subtle. It might be doing stuff like you might be lowering levels and making things look darker, like they're a bit more like candlelight, that kind of thing. You'll be working on more effect-based grading rather than just making everything look nice, like this stuff, which has all come out of documentaries. So this all had to look fairly conventional and normal. Having said that, there are a few issues with it. So the Toolbench is a very, very valuable tool because it's the only way you can really quickly compare shots. Any other way gets really cumbersome, believe me. Um, let's go down here. Right. So I'm going to get rid of that for a moment and just briefly touch on. Oh, sorry, go on. Yes. So if you've got your frame viewer, I mean you can separate these. If I open up, you can pull that tab out. With, with Final Cut Pro, any tab can be broken away. So I can break that out there. So if I play, it won't, it won't play as such. It's a frame viewer. It's not a, it's not a video window. So it's p basically parked because I've marked that in point. Let me swap those over because they're a bit back to front. There we go. So yes, it updates as I drag through on the current frame we're looking at and holds a particular in point frame for the other side. So the left hand side doesn't move around because it's looking at that in point there. So is it being the projector is overheating. Cute. <laughs> it's all right, it's only the right hand one that's overheating. You can look at the left one. <laughs> so if it explodes, I think I'm in the firing line, so it should be all right. Um, <laughs> I find that rather amusing. Um, so yes, the frame viewer does live update, as you can see there. It's going to get rid of those for a moment. Um, I highly recommend when, when you're grading to grade a copy of your edit. Um, they don't t there's no resources lost in copying edits. I'm a great believer in taking sequences and when I'm I sort of leave an audit trail behind me. I want to know what the process was that led up to something. So if you ever have to unpick it, you know, and it happens occasionally, when you least expect it with the worst deadline imaginable, someone comes in and says, 
we're going to pull it apart and we're going to re-stitch it back together. Sometimes, and especially with HD work, lots of colour correction slows you down. They won't play in real time. Um, simple colour correctors will, but if you've got effects on there and you've rescaled images, you've got moves and filters and effects and all kinds of other stuff going on, um, and it doesn't take much to clog it down and it won't play. Now, if you have to recut it and it's full of filters, you've got to remove your filters, make a copy, and then colour grade your copy. So you've always got a clean, uncorrected version that you can go back to, make your corrections, and if you need to, you can then copy and paste uh, filters and things out of the timeline, which I, I am going to cover. So, I make copies. The simple thing to do is, there's a great example. I've already got colour correction in there. I would simply do an option D for duplicate and make a copy. And simply call it graded. And then Bring it up on the timeline, you can mess with it. Your original sequence as cut is left alone in the bin. If you need to go and revisit it for any reason, you can. Um, there'll be many circumstances where this will save, save a lot of mucking about. Uh, you'll need to do that if you ever work in colour. Colour is a, an application that gets bundled with Final Cut Pro as part of Final Cut Studio which I haven't really used very much and I choose not to use it for a number of reasons, but I will cover it this evening very briefly to explain to you where it can help you and where it will bring you unstuck. Or should I say, where it will take a lot more time out of your life, <laughs> which is more to the point, because I, I'm pretty sure most people here would be aware of the fact that editing is a pretty slow, laborious process. You don't want to spend more time editing and, and grading. You want to you want to get it done as efficient, efficiently as possible so that when people come back to you and want to make modifications, you're not tying yourself in knots trying to unravel something. Um, but for sending things into colour, you need to make copies. It's absolutely crucial. Okay. What I'll do now very briefly is take you through the kind of process you might go through if you're grading a little program. So we'll use this one here and what I'm going to do is just highlight everything and remove the filters. There are shortcuts for all this kind of stuff. I generally make little button bars. I've got a little button bar down here for copying and pasting attributes. Um, that's part of the keyboard mapping which you can look up in the manual. You can remap the keyboard um, and you can also remap button bars here. I've got my own personal ones which are, are quite compact, I don't use a lot, and I take them wherever I go. So I've always got the same stuff available and you can load them up into other people's systems. So I've got a few little simple ones there. But I'll use the conventional menus so you can see where things are. If you right click on the timeline, you'll see remove attributes down here and it simply allows you to remove stuff from those clips. And it'll remove whatever, it'll show you what is available to be removed. So we're going to remove the filters. So we go back to a really clean, raw, unprocessed thing. So first thing I would do, as I was saying before, is go and get my three-way colour preset 235. It's, I don't always work the same way, but the simple way is to drag it onto every clip. Now everything is going to show me the true white point. So I can have a look through that and start to have a bit of a think about what I want to do with it. I've deliberately chosen some material that's quite good because this is this, the most common stuff you deal with is usually pretty good. So in that case, you can double click it to load it up into the viewer and you can start working. In my case, first thing I normally do is pick up a white point. So I'm looking for white from that little thing over there. It's not far off. It was a little bit warmer than we thought. Yeah, 